Hey guys, real quick before we get into the episode, don't forget to like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash hella average gaming. Follow us on Twitter, twitter.com slash hella average gaming, average spelled A V G. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash hella average gaming. Listen to us on Stitcher, check us out on iTunes, and make sure to listen to us on Google Play. And with all that said and done, let's get to it. What's up, everybody, and welcome to episode 68 of the Hella Average Games Cast. We have made it another week. We have weathered the storm that was Florence. We're alive. We've got power. We've got video games, but we've only got two. Jeremy, what's up, buddy? Oh, man, I'm missing Carmen already. Carmen had to evacuate since we last spoke. Uh, he evacuated his home, so he's down here with his in-laws, and he doesn't have his recording equipment. But fear not, he's alive, and I don't think too much damage happened to his property, so we're all good. You just won't be hearing his big, beautiful voice this week. That makes me sad, Jeremy. Always makes me sad. Who, who am I going to argue with? Well, we can just talk about things, and you can argue with the wall, and I'm sure that he will have a great listening skill for you. Well, arguing with the wall is like arguing with Carmen. <laughs> oh, bazing! Yeah. We're going to talk about video games. I think me and Jeremy can hold down the fort. We've got some news. We've got some new releases. We've got a whole lot of stuff going on this week. We're going to skip our normal super fight, as Carmen has all that stuff. So, we'll be back next week. We're going to hopefully reset, and maybe all the luck will come back to me. Who knows? Uh, I think it's me and Carmen next week. Oh, shit. So two weeks, I hopefully, hopefully the luck will stay for me. It won't go to anybody else. Yeah, I think he's staying away because he's afraid. Afraid of a five-in-a-row five, five in a row champion. It's like uh, Chuck Norris fighting a baby. That's right. It's like Chuck Norris's beard fighting God. Ooh, that's what if what if God's beard is Chuck Norris's beard? They're one and the same. Oh, God gave it to Chuck Norris to, to get rid of evildoers. I got you. Thanks. Yes. Well, let's talk about video games. Not that that wouldn't make a awesome plot for a video game. I've seen worse on Steam, trust me. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, I know you've played something, so tell me about it. What was it? How'd you have? What, or not? How did you have? What did you? How did you take I laid, it? <laughs> I laid it. I laid it low across the fire. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. So tell me what you've been playing, buddy. Uh, I've been Dragon Quest Eleven again, all week long. Making a lot of headway. Uh, again, I would say maybe I'm halfway through the game. It's hard to tell. Yeah, uh, I got my... I want to say I got the final two party members. Uh, which is a badass like martial artist chick named Jade. And an uh, old martial artist man named Rab. Uh, I pretty much put Jade in my party. She's my, she's my attacker. I love her attacks. She fights with a spear. But she also has... Uh, She's one of many characters in a long tradition of Dragon Quest characters who are like a seductress. So a lot of her special abilities are like seductive abilities. Like there's one attack where she like slams her butt into the enemies. Another one where she does a puff puff, which if you've watched Dragon Ball, you probably know what that is. I do. I uh, do know what that is. Yeah. She uses that and it can uh, beguile an enemy as they call it. She has sexy beam, which can do an attack and confuse an enemy. Uh... And also, her charm stat is very high. In Dragon Quest, your charm basically means there's a chance that the enemy won't attack you or will just skip their turn because they're just so enamored by your beauty. So I'm I'm loving having her in the party. Uh, Rab's not bad either. He's, he fights with a pair of claws so he can like attack twice in one turn, though his attack isn't very high. He's also a pretty good little mage. He's got some black magic skills, some white magic skills, but I'd rather just have my stock black magic... Uh, mage veronica in the party at all times hers is just way better and uh i've been putting silvando back in he's good for handling groups of enemies and i got a badass armor set for my main character because uh there's some certain like armor sets when you equip them in the game they change your appearance and i gave him the dracillian armor which makes him look like a like badass knight with like a winged helmet and a cape and shit pretty fucking cool that just sounds badass here it? yeah it's awesome 
So if it, I mean, it sounds like that you could be good. How many characters have charm? Because if you could like load up your party with charm characters, you might just get lucky the whole time. Well, two characters in your party excel at charm, and that's uh, Jade and Sylvando, who I both have in my party. The other ones, not so much. I think Eric, the thief, is kind of high, but everyone else, theirs is like lower. They they all excel at certain areas. You know, Veronica, my black mage, of course, she excels in magic, and then I have someone else who excels in agility, and then I have someone who excels in strength and so forth. Uh, there, like, There's things you can equip to increase your charm, but it's not going to be one of those where it's so high... They're never going to take damage. I still get hit, but it's probably like a, I want to say like 1 in 10 chance an enemy will be charmed or something with someone with really high charm stats. So it's not game-breaking. It's just a nice little, neat little bonus. Okay, I can get down with that. Yeah. Plus, I I'm, I can't confirm it, but I think maybe like their higher charm stats might affect the effectness, effectiveness of like their abilities. So like uh, the sexy beam might have do more damage if your charm is higher. I can't confirm that. Well, get on it, Jeremy. Play some more and go confirm that for us next week, okay? I will. Now, yes, let, me sir. Ask, let me ask you a question. Now, are you doing a whole lot of the main story? Or are you still just enamored with the side quest on here? Or, that's or? that's something. I'm glad you brought that up because they really did a good job of balancing the side quests. There's not very many, um, and the ones they have don't take very long. In fact, I've actually completed every side quest so far. Because every time I get to a new area of the game, there's at most maybe three side quests you can do in a new town. And it's usually, you know, hey, go find me this thing or make this thing with your forge and bring it back to me. So not too bad. It's not it's not like other games where you can just walk two feet and there's a whole other side quest to do like, like it was in Yakuza and so forth. It's not overwhelming. So I'm making pretty good progress. That's the only reason I think I'm so far into this game. Because I'm able to do all the side quests and just keep on trucking at a good pace. So there's not a whole lot of veering off. It's kind of on the rails, like you're going pretty much in a straight line here. Uh, you can actually um, explore. I was able to go to. I went to a uh, the snowy region called Sniffelheim. Uh, and I think <laughs> I was supposed to. I know I noticed that too, but I, I think I wasn't supposed to go there quite yet because they wouldn't let me into the town. But I was still able to explore the region. I got some armor that was really expensive and better than the town I'm supposed to go to. So, you know, you can go a little off map, but they do kind of keep you in a straight line, but there's definitely room to explore. I've, I've been finding a lot of islands out on the sea that I can explore, but there, there's stuff there I can't quite get to. There are these doors that are locked that I need this specific key that I guess I haven't found yet until I get further into the game. So it's good to know just to come back to it. Yeah, it sounds like it's definitely got a good mix and may, maybe hit that sweet spot of there's stuff to do on the side, but you know, you're going to kind of keep moving at a good pace, which yes, I think it, is lost on RPGs nowadays. Yeah, I think they're doing side quests in this much like I like in the old Final Fantasies where you can do a few things throughout the game, but it keeps you on a pretty straightforward path until you hit like X point in the game, then like everything opens up and you can do all this side quest stuff or not, which is what I'm hoping. So we'll see. Any plans to to add anything else into the library, or are you finishing this off the gate? I, I'm i not going to lie. I was in Walmart today, and I saw Spider-Man. But I was like, <laughs> I, no, I've I got to focus. Spider-Man will probably be my next game after this, though. Okay. But I've, I, wa- I want to finish this one. I don't want this just, I don't, I don't want to get to the end and stop and all that shit I always do. I want to finish this off just like I did Nino Kuni and then move on to something else. And man, I gotta stop watching Spider-Man Let's Plays because goddamn, it looks so good. Oh, it looks real fucking good. We're gonna talk a little bit more about Spidey later. Spidey. I've got it sitting on my shelf. It's just uh, between Destiny, which I've still been hooked on, and then I've got a new like for the next month. I'm on a new work schedule, so it's earlier. I'm going to bed a lot earlier, so I haven't got to play a lot. But <clears throat> I think Spider-Man is gonna be next. A nice quick play, th- probably a story mode playthrough of that, and then I'm gonna go straight into Red Dead. Ooh. Yeah, you, so you got to try and get into it before Red Dead? I'm going to try, because I'm thinking if I don't get into it before Red Dead comes out, I'm going straight to Red Dead. Oh, yeah. I so, know that feeling. I, I I know you. Once Red Dead comes out, that's going to that's gonna take up your time for a while. Yes, you know me very well then. <laughs> until until Black Ops comes out and you play that for two weeks. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that usually doesn't take up too much of my, my, uh, <laughs> my span of <laughs> memories. Two weeks is about right. My, uh, my attention span is too short for that. But um, I played. I did play some Destiny, of course, this week. 
Got some grindage in on there. Played some more Gambit. I love that mode. That's that mode that mixes like the PvE and the PvP. So I'm down with that. I think it should be in more games. And I think more games are going to copy it. Or at least put a similar a similar mode into their game. Which is totally okay. Because this game would work great in, in most action games that you could think of. Um... What else? I played some Mario Kart. I, d- I did the usual run. I mean, I can't really... I didn't really switch up a whole lot. Yes, I did. Damn it, I about forgot something. I bought Guacamelee 2. Ah, how is it? It is just as fun as the first one. I am... That's what I, that's what I heard. I am laughing at it. I mean, you go in... It just it looks so good, and it feels so good, and the jokes just hit home. It's It's a damn good game. As long as you can still turn into a chicken. I'm you can. I it. just got the, uh, nice. what is it, Poyo Power, I think is what it is. Poyo. Do um, they do that thing where they take away all your powers from the last game? Yeah, so like the basic storyline is uh, you're now, you're Juan. Is it Juan is the main character? I think it's Juan. And you're fat now, and you've got two kids, and then a one of the shamans, the goats from another timeline, comes to get you. And you're the only Juan that lived through all the timelines. So now you have to go back to different timelines, get your power, and you have to save the relics or the bad guy will get the sacred guacamole recipe of the gods. Nice. So you have to save the relics so they won't get that recipe because they wrote on those relics. Dude, I, I really hope there's a Mexican Lawrence Fishburne in there to come to you and just say, you are the Juan. <laughs> I haven't seen him yet, but that, I think that uh, you should go ahead and reach out and get that into the game. Right now, because we we all love jokes and puns. Your puns are the best, actually. I pontificate on them constantly. <laughs> but uh, that is actually a really fun. I've picked it up probably about an hour at a time. I'm like three hours into it. Nice. And God, it's just it's it's one of those. It's it's a feel good game. I think if any game's ever been a feel good game, that's the game. I I definitely plan to pick this up, but I'm gonna wait for a sale. Was it like twenty bucks right now? Yeah, it's twenty bucks. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'll wait for a sale. If it goes down to like ten, I'll definitely snag it up. I wouldn't have pulled the trigger on it so fast if I hadn't played the first one and enjoyed the first one so much. Mm. Um, like, um, yeah, because I got the first one I think on a really cheap sale too, and I really loved it. But I mean, another reason I'm not gonna get it right away is because there's just so much good stuff out right now. I don't have room on my plate, so I can definitely wait for a little sale. Yeah, I think. I mean, I think it's a fairly in-depth game i think i'm like three hours in at 24 percent. so okay okay that's good maybe that's like a 12 hour game okay maybe i mean we'll, we'll see how you know it, it can pump up kind of at the end they can make it quicker but that's i feel like it's going to be pretty solid i mean that's good for a side scroller so as a matter of fact i could probably google how long it is just uh a regular playthrough because you know how we love the the google machine here Let's see here. Guacamelee 2. The main story would be about eight and a half hours. And the main plus the extras would be about 11 and a half hours. So, yeah, right around there. I like yeah, the. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's not bad. 20 bucks if you're any kind of fan. Uh, now, this would be the Metroidvania style games that I got confused. But this game is perfect. It's got a nice quality to it. Good jokes. Go get it. Zesty. Nice. And then, yeah, everything else was just a normal run. Uh, dead Cells. No more Dead Cells? Yeah, yeah oh, I played I it. Yeah. One or two games. Let's just pick up and sit down. Um, Let's see. What else? Mario Kart, Destiny, and Guacamelee. That was it! <clears throat> oh, you got a nice little variety in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Did, what system did you get the Guacamelee for? PlayStation. Is it not on Switch? It may be on the Switch. It could okay, be. Because I thought that would have been a perfect Switch game. It is. It really is. And... and a lot of my decision, I mean, I play my PlayStation, I think, more than anything. But oh, yeah. um, if you have a Switch and this game's on it, it is perfect for a pick-up and set-down game. Uh, perfect to take on the road. I mean, you don't really have to think a whole lot. You're going to get to where you got to go without turning your brain on too much. And the powers are just fucking cool. Like, we can turn into oh, a chicken, yeah. and when you do like a, a sideways dash, it's just amazing. There's one part, <laughs> like the whole point, like you break statues to get powers. Yeah. And I'm not going to like spoil all of them, but there's this one part where one of the shaman 
goats are like, go into my house and break the statue to get your uppercut, I think is what it was. So you mm-hmm. go in and it turns out he's a statue collector and you start breaking all the statues in his house and they give you these funny powers. I'll give you an example. The okay. freshest breath. <laughs> and they're all like this. And of course the statue you need is the last one. And you come out and he's like, did you find the uppercut? And you look at him and you're like, yes. And he's just like, wait, wait, no. Cause you've destroyed all of his statues. It's amazing. Oh. It's amazing. Oh, so, so the goat was the owner of the statue. Yes. The guy who told you to go oh. in there. So that was one of the funniest things. That's one of the funniest things I've seen in games in a while. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I'm not going to lie though. I would love to have the power of eternal fresh breath. That would be, and like, I'm telling you, some of the powers that you get were great for everyday life. So, Such as? I don't want to spoil them all. I can't remember most of them, but uh, okay. the Fresh Breath one, um, uh, um, uh, like, I don't know the word they use, but basically like beautiful hair that never messed up. Uh, oh, okay. Shit like that. Um, that. Yeah, that would be awesome. Abs of steel, things like that. Yeah, <laughs> I want the mats of steel, boy. But yeah, it's a fun game. I highly recommend it. I would give it 8.5 bags of dicks. Maybe Ooh, 9. Good, maybe 9. But I want to I want to finish okay. it first. We well, you know, I mean, we we always whenever you first start a game, uh, me too, you know, we always rate them very high. You got to play through it for a while and see if it still holds. Yes, I want to make sure I get past my nostalgia and fanboyism first. Yeah. But I I I'm I would I could see this being at least an 8 out of 10. Eight, eight, uh, I, could, I could not disagree with you on that. Yes. All right, let's keep it rolling, Jeremy. We got a few new releases to talk about. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles 4, and we're just going to go over some of the big ones. It came out. Uh, we got FIFA 19 that came out since we last spoke. Um, Shadow of the... Excuse me. Lord, I about burped in the middle of that. Wow, that's a long title. Shadow uh. of the... Excuse me. Lord, I about burped <laughs> out of that. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Which I haven't heard a lot about, but you said it's like right in the middle of the road, right? Yeah, it's it's the lo- from what I've seen. Take this with a grain of salt, obviously, but it's probably the not. It's probably like the lowest scored of the new Tomb Raiders. Uh, not bad, but just definitely the most divisive. I think a lot of people were just complaining that it, it doesn't really do much new for the series, and uh, at least Game Informer. I was reading their review, and they said that they were very disappointed with the. Uh, I guess the epiphany of her become like the whole thing is this is supposed to be her defining moment as the when she becomes the Tomb Raider, and they said that when that moment finally comes, it's just very lackluster and anticlimactic. It's just like, oh, that's it. You know, I, I think no we talked about it. I th- yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to me for the to to become the Tomb Raider it has to be like trumpets blaring and gold everywhere. But the, I, I, would, talked- I would love it. I would love it if, when she does become the Tomb Raider, she puts on the iconic uh, blue tank top, and it has like a special bra that makes her boobs just one big triangle. <laughs> one big triangle, yeah. And she's like, "Fuck this shit!" She takes them out. <laughs> um, that, we uh, talked before about series that we never got into or think are overrated, uh, but this is one I never got into the Tomb Raider. I, obviously, I think I played at least one back on the PS2. Which one was that? Was that the bat? If that was Angel of Darkness, that was like the I can't remember, one. but I know I had my PS. No, I had no, I had one on the PlayStation. That's probably that's probably one of the first three, which were the good. Ones, I think I played apparently. one of the first three then back in the day, but I just I never got into it and never kept me and wanted me going back in. So yeah, I I only ever played like the demo that came on one of those PlayStation discs. I didn't like it because the controls were really jank, but I did. I have been playing the new ones and I really like them. Like I really I like I I bought the first of uh, Tomb Raider the re the remake when it came out on PS3 I got it as part of like one of the GameStop's buy two get one sale and I was really impressed with it and then I liked it so much I rebought it on PS4 when I got my PS4 and they did the definitive edition and then I got the uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider and I plan to get Shadow of the Tomb Raider but I'm gonna again wait for a sale probably get it later on in the year when it's much cheaper and so forth. But I really like these new Tomb Raider games. They they feel more like um, uh, Uncharted to me. I like the survival aspects. The combat's pretty good, you know. So I'm 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 liking them. Very cool. Very cool. Um, you can be our resident uh, Tomb Raider expert. I bestow yeah. that onto you because I'm pretty sure Karma's not into them either. So we got to have one. Everybody gets one. Well, at least one of us play them. 
Uh, that's about it for the new releases. I just want to shout out some of the big ones coming out. Um, obviously, again, the Switch gets a shit ton of indies, and Steam is still a dumpster fire of games you never mm. want to play. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I guess, without further ado, it is time for some... News. And we've got some news coming at you hot this week. Our robot friend there, Jeremy's voice, says, Welcome to the News Dome, bitch. No, I'm just kidding. Ooh. I like that. Spidey. Spider-Man himself has sold 3.3 million units in three days on the PlayStation 4, making it the fastest selling PlayStation game of all time. Damn. Sony is killing it this year, man. Man. First no, God of War, then Spidey? Yeah. God of War, and now Spidey's doing it. Mm-mm-mm. What a year for Sony. They're just knocking home runs left and right. I tell you, man. that every Every day, that... Game of the year list is getting harder and harder to make. It is, it is, because you've got, I mean, I, I hate to say it right now, but Microsoft doesn't really have much, but you've got so much no. between Sony and Nintendo. There's just a lot going on. I can't think of a, even a single Xbox exclusive that came out this year. Like one. Uh, didn't see if these come out this year. <laughs> oh, yeah. And good for you, so good for you, Microsoft. <laughs> and uh, State of Decay Two. I don't even know what that is. And a couple others, I think. But yeah, there hasn't wow. been a lot. I mean, you're right. You're totally right. They're they're just investing in the future. So maybe wow. in a, in two to five years, they will just blow the doors off. But right really now, riding that short, really riding that short bus. Um. So yeah, Spider Man, and it looks amazing. I I it, I can't wait to get into it. Oh, me too. Um. I know we said, you know, we heard about the Peter Parker thing before it came out. We're like, man, I put some wind, you know, took some wind out of the sails. Um, we didn't think it'd be game of the year material, but I think it's back up to a game of the year contender. Uh, contender. Oh, oh, definitely. I mean, the, honestly, the I've I watched a lot of reviews, and the only negatives I hear about it is they say that the Mary Jane missions are kind of boring because they're forced self. Oh, but okay. thank, they said, thankfully, there's not a lot of those, and uh, most of it's just web slinging goodness. And apparently every costume you could ever imagine is in this game, which is epic. And also, they apparently, and I was glad to hear this, that they're not just costumes. They have different, like, effects. So, oh, like, I maybe you equip, that. like, yeah, so, like, maybe you equip the Iron Spider and your defense goes up. Or you equip his uh, homecoming costume, you know, the little sweater-looking thing, and maybe you have, like, higher agility or so forth. But I heard they had, like, their own little, like, uh, skill trees and so forth. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I like, I like that. that. I like, I like that. that. Spider Man swinging onto a PlayStation near you. Hey. Hey. Uh, let's talk about some anime for a minute. Jump Force. They have added a few new characters. Let's go over them. We've got Karapika, Killua, both from Hunter x Hunter. Um, I'm Team Killua on this one. He's a badass motherfucker. We've got Super Saiyan Blue Goku, and to round out the A Squad, we've got Yugi. That's right, Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh! The Egyptian his, prince himself. Him and his gigantic photorealistic hand. <laughs> it's funny because we're bashing Yugi in the in the group chat. I mean, obviously he's they're gonna make his power is probably his powers are gonna be summoning. We don't know yet. But uh, Yugi is not a fighter. Carmen can't stand the idea of him being in there. I like the idea of throwing it, you know, some some different characters in there. He's not confirmed yet to be a main character. He could still be a, a support character. No, I think he's confirmed to be a main character. Last, I think all these are. Last yeah. I saw, he wasn't. Uh, Again, let's go to the, the Google machine. I, I just hope that someone, like, mods the game to give him, like, one gigantic right hand. <laughs> Yeah, his dual monster hand. And it's just his it's only attack is just a gigantic pimp slap. Alright, so it looks like a few more uh details have come out on Yugi. This comes from a game tyrant. Uh it looks like he will use his cards from the dual monster deck, but it won't just be monster cards. Uh Bandai Namco sent out a tweet about Yugi um drawing cards and summoning the Dark Magician and Slifer the Sky Dragon. So it sounds sounds like he's gonna be like Pokemon trainer from Smash. Yeah, it says some some cars will work as assist characters possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, so we still don't know. 
Um, we don't know how he's going to fight against the big boys like Goku, Vegeta, Naruto, Luffy. Man, I mean, realistically, he get the shit kicked out of him. Oh I mean, yeah, absolutely. I, I I know nothing. I know nothing of Yu Gi Oh, but I do know that it's just basically like Pokemon cards and shit. And he's just a like physically a normal person, so he would get smashed by pretty much everyone in here. Agreed. I totally agree. Yeah. And Karapika would get the shit kicked out of him, too, since he's not fighting any Phantom Troop members. Yeah, I mean, he does have... Uh, so he, the way his power worked, is, and this is me doing a brief and probably getting a few things mixed up, but um, he's got five chains, one for each finger, or maybe four, and two of them do work against non-Phantom Troop people, so obviously they're going to have to make his powers work on everybody. Yeah. I was, I was going to say, I thought you told me that he could only, that was the thing, his power only worked on Phantom Troop members, and if he used him on non-Phantom Troop members, it would kill him or something. So, he, um, if he used, cert- so each finger is a chain, and each finger does something different. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he has two that he made a rule. If he breaks his rule, he dies. And those two that he yeah. made the rule is, it only used on Phantom Troop members. Now, aren't there ten Phantom Troop members? Yes. So, one chain for one member? Yeah, well, he was saving, I think he was going, wanting to go after the big guy and use his big chain on him. The dude who looks like Crocodile. Yes, yes. Um, His name, was it Carrillo? I can't remember his name now. Off the top and of my that head. Was li- that was literally the moment I stopped watching the show. Crollo. C-H-R-O-L-L-O. Um, so, yeah, it, I like him in the anime. He's a badass against the yeah. Phantom Troop. He's just, that's kind of. Yeah, I mean, the little bit I saw, Killua was definitely a fighter who would very much fit in in this universe. But, like, we were talking earlier, and I think they should have taken that Karapika guy out and put in a little Cell-looking dude. Yeah, the king. He's the he's the king in the, that, that last season that was it, of the anime. Is is that his name, King? I think his name is just King, or he, he may have a name, okay. um, but I, I don't I've, know what. I've heard he's, like, un, unbeated or undefeated. He's, like, a big old badass. His name is Merriam, M E R U E M. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't, I, I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure that he never got defeated. I think he just I, decided to not kill anymore. Yeah, I, I saw like a list of like, like top ten anime characters who were never beaten, and like he was on there. Yeah, I mean, he could. There are anime characters out there who could beat him, but he's probably high. Oh yeah, he's probably high Dragon Ball Z level. Um, That's what I've heard. Probably yeah. on the same level as mm, maybe a little bit stronger than Majin Buu. Ooh, same so level. Stronger than same so level. Stronger than Cell. Oh yeah, stronger. Yeah, I think he'd give wow. it. I think he'd give it to Cell. This dude was, I mean, so he could destroy planets. Oh, he's a planet buster. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah I mean, he's he's yeah. a strong. Like he. I mean, he. He was almost too powerful for the entire, like, for the whole Hunter x Hunter universe. Jesus. I mean, no, like, the top, even the uh, the head of the Hunters, like, the head guy fought him and couldn't beat him. And went killed himself in the process using his ultimate attacks and couldn't beat him. Dude, team, I want Team 4 Star to do another one of those little, like, mini episodes for the Cell games where Cell meets them. And they just, like, talk <laughs> shit to each other. I love oh, those. Look, it's dis- oh, look, it's discount me. <laughs> you would do good at those, Jeremy. Oh, like well, that's what Carmen was saying. He was saying I'm just like Cell, at least in those those episodes. Oh so yeah, I'm for like, sure. Thank you. Like thank you so much. You do have oh, that, my God. that aura about you. That snarkiness. Yeah. The weird sex. The weird sexual tension. Yes. Um, I would put a lot of these uh, Hunter X Hunter characters on the same level as. Um, I think they could fight in the. One Piece universe. Okay, that's that's the level I would think they would be. I I could see that from the little bit I saw. They did look very One Piecey with their their Nen being similar to like Devil Fruit powers. Yes, yes. I wouldn't say nearly as advanced and developed as one as Devil Fruit powers. At least some people. Yeah. the The cool thing about the Nen in there, and I hope they show it off in the game, is that it was very like your Nen was you customizable to you. Like you chose, you figured out what you were, and you chose how to make it your own. So, oh yeah, that was well, cool. That's kind of that. what that was kind of like Devil Fruits, how they could be awakened. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at all the fucking crazy shit Luffy does with just being rubber. And I hope, like, I really, I don't like with this being Jump Force being a realistic game. Like, I hope they're going to be able to to get that across. 
on all levels. Oh, they're, you know? oh, they're going to do something like in Fighter Z to balance everyone out, so Yamcha can fight Majin Buu sure. and whatnot. Yeah. Otherwise, it would literally just be Goku just smashing people left and right. Um, so I'm excited about that, especially now that we got Blue Goku. That's cool. Um, oh, I knew he was coming. While we're talking about anime, Android 21 is confirmed for Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Called it. No big shocker there. You've been calling it since day one. So go get your anime fix. I can't wait for Jump Forth. God, I can't wait for Jump Forth. Ah, Does that come out too. this year? Or does it come out next early um, next year? I think it's next year. Is it March? I think it's, it could be one of those games coming out in March. Yeah, I think it's like March. Okay. Uh, Android. I think Android 21 comes out sometime at the end of this month along with Cooler. Very cool. If I remember correctly. Very cool. And he's, he's also coming with a new stage, Space Arena. Oh, nice. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. So I, I don't know what that is. If I had to assume, it might be the uh, Tournament of Power Arena from Super, which would be awesome. Well, it's obviously an arena in space, Jeremy. What made you give you that idea? <laughs> obviously. Maybe maybe it's just a gigantic arena that takes up a lot of space. Space arena. Um, Let's talk about the newest little kid on the block. The PlayStation Mini is confirmed coming out in October? November? They said it was for holidays. Holidays. Something holidays. like that. Yeah. Um, the PlayStation Mini is coming. It is a obviously in the same vein as the SNES and the NES Mini. There's going to be 20 games on it. It's going to retail for $100. Uh, they haven't gave a complete list yet, but we know Tekken 3 and Wild Arms and Final Fantasy 7 are going to be on there. Um, and, ju- and Jumping Jack Flash. Jumping Jack Flash, some game I've never heard of before. I've seen it. It's really weird. Not something I'd put on there, but I maybe there's an audience for it? Possibly. Possibly. What games have to be on this system? Well, obviously Metal Gear. Yes, absolutely. Tw- Twisted Metal. Absolutely. Uh, you have to include Crash. I, I mean, I know so. they had the Crash. You had, I know you had the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy, but you gotta have the original. And I'd probably say Spyro should be on there also. I would say Parappa, the Rappa. Parappa's got to be on there. He's a Sony uh, staple. Uh, uh, also, Legend of Dragoon should be on there. Oh, yeah. I, I, say, I always forget about Legend of Dragoon. Yes, it should be on there. And it's a Sony-made game, so why not? Huh. Um, another, another good one that should probably be on there is uh, Abe's Odyssey. See, I never played that one either. I, I never did either, but it's another PlayStation staple. It's kind of like one of those like side-scrolling puzzle games similar to the old Prince of Persia's. It's got a really big fan base. A lot of people love it. And they should probably put that on there. Yeah. Uh, Gran Turismo. Absolutely. When, uh, Gran Tur- uh, God damn it. I'm about to say something's really stupid. Uh, <laughs> uh, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night. Oh, yes. Symphony of the Night has to be on there. Another, yes. another staple. And um, uh, Chrono Cross. Eh, I could do without it. I can't. Even though Gosh. I like I like True Chrono Trigger better. I mean, there's so many better RPGs on there. Ah, ta ta. Let me dream, oh, Jeremy. Let me live. So yeah, we uh, got a bunch of games that could come, and and uh, I hope that they do right and don't start putting some uh, very obscure ass games that well, nobody. Wants. They only got. Considering they only have twenty, they really need to pick the cream of the crop. You know, not the cream of the crap. Agreed. And, Agreed. And, and like like I said, this is too expensive for my taste. A hundred dollars for twenty games? Eh. You know, I mean like the I was looking at the the SNES had twenty one games for eighty dollars and the uh NES was I think thirty two games for uh sixty. So we keep going down. So I'm guessing with the SNES cl- or with the the N64 Classic comes out. It's going to be $120, and it's going to come with 15 games. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is too rich for my blood. I think it's a pass for me. Um, it is. It looks It looks very nice. I would love to be able to buy this, but it's just not worth it at this time. And I've, I've got so many of these games already, and I can play them in high definition. Because a lot of them are downloads on the PS3. Yeah. So they, it, they already put... You know, for me, and the way I look at it is, if... If um this had been the first mini system, I yes. might would buy it. Like if it was the first oh, one I, to hit the market, I would have definitely bought it. I think yeah. I'm getting like mini fatigue. Hmm. Oh, another game that should be on there: the original Tomb Raider. Okay, all right. If you yeah, say so. Uh, 
Yeah, another. I mean, again, not one I personally like, but another classic. I agree. But yeah, it's just, I agree. It's just, I know that's like a staple. But yeah, this should have been. I think this should have been eighty bucks. If they did eighty dollars for twenty games, I probably would have picked one up, just to have. I can agree with you on that. I really can. Yeah. Um. Let us know if you're gonna pick it up, but I know it's a hard pass for me. For now, let us know in the com- for let us know in the comments what game should be on there. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, I think we covered all the good ones. Um. Speaking of minis, the Sega Genesis Mini is delayed until 2019. Oh, um, what a shame! And apparently, the rumor is it's going to be developed in Japan, which would might it, it, that might be good for it. Which doesn't. It's weird because it says it's being made by At Games, which is in China. So, well, maybe I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was again. Maybe it was China. Then the, the article I saw, I could have sworn it was Japan. It would have. It could be. It makes more sense to be made in China, and it's going to be a piece of shit. Um. Even honestly, though, even if this thing was one hundred percent made by Sega. It wasn't going to be a piece of shit. It was going to be exactly like the the good minis and all that. I would still probably give this a hard pass because I have the Sega Genesis collection on my PS4 for thirty. I got that for like thirty bucks. I might would pick got... this up just because I was like such a big Sega baby and had one. And oh yeah, you know, just that, that that. And I don't have the Sega Genesis collection. Not to say it's not because I don't want it. I just haven't. I don't feel. I don't really necessarily want to go back to the games right now. But if I had like yeah. a mini console, there it'd be like, oh, that's pretty cool. I mean, these things are really just cool display pieces. Oh, absolutely. Even when, yeah, I even display the boxes. So, I mean, even if I'm not playing them, they're still usually worth getting for me. You know, but the gen- that just because the Genesis has that at-games stain on it, I'm not... Ugh, no way. No way. Agreed. Agreed. Fuck at-games. Yeah, fuck you at games. All right. Capcom Vancouver sadly is shut down. That is the studio behind Dead Rising. Uh, it's always shitty when you see these game development companies, excuse me, game development companies uh, get shut down. A lot of people lose their jobs. Hopefully they can get back in the industry, get back on their feet. Well, but apparently you were saying that the rumor is they were they had Dead Rising 4 in production while, before they I shut believe- down. Yeah, I believe so, but I, I guess they just weren't making the money. I think the last game they made was the mobile version of Pocket Fighter, which didn't do very well. Uh, which sucks because I I love Pocket Fighter. It's just a puzzle game with Street Fighter characters, but you know it was mobile, so touch controls, which makes it a lot harder to play, and of course in game microtransaction bullshit. So I think this was just a case of Capcom needing to save money, but I think this ended up costing them a bunch of money because these were. Apparently, they had a bunch of games in development, so they had already dumped some money into this. So they just lost whatever investments they had uh, by closing the studio down. It's crazy. Very crazy. Yeah. Very sad but to hear. This this might have been a case of, you know, cutting off an arm to save the body. And shout out to one of, one of the podcasts I listen to, Gamertag Radio. I follow a lot of the guys on Twitter. And Paris is one of the co-hosts there. And he was saying, like, this studio was like Taylor made to do big things you know like they had a lot Ooh. of they could have done you know colin moriarty oh. i mean the biggest x-man i'm mean, not x-man the biggest mega man fan in the whole wide world said they were tailor-made to make an open world mega man game like oh that would be awesome i mean you got you got a, a, a sad when a studio of this caliber shuts down yeah i guess no i guess that mega man legends 3 ain't never gonna happen unless somebody else takes the mantle well, Capcom could still make it. Yeah, technically. Maybe they maybe they're gonna move some of that staff to one of their other other uh, studios or something. I think that oh, I mean, that some you know that you could Bandai Namco could take care of something like that. Yeah. Um, I think that uh, what's the studio that does Sucker Punch? Is that them? Who does what? King Sucker Punch Shovel Knight. No, oh, that's Yacht Games. Yeah, that one. Yep. Yeah. What is Su- what does Sucker Punch do? What was I thinking about then? They did Inf- Infamous, but they're doing something else too. I'm not thinking about they Infamous. also they they did that uh, Xbox game uh, Sunset Overdrive. Sunset Overdrive. That's the one I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, uh, uh, but I think I meant they, they also something else. Yeah, but sad to hear. I hope uh, I hope these people find jobs. I hate when people lose their jobs, man. Especially in the gaming industry, one of the most booming industries in the world right now. 
I know. Um, I saw another NPD, and I can't quote it exactly. I don't have it in front of me, but it said something to the effect of that portable gaming console sales are up this year as well by like $100 million. Well, like 3DSs and shit? Uh, I think it that includes everything from mobile gaming to 3DSs, Vitas. I mean... I wonder if... I wonder if they're counting the Switch. I don't know. I don't know if you do or not. That that would make sense to me. I think you count Switch and home consoles, right? I don't know. I mean, it is technically portable. Technically, it is. Yeah, I used to be. I I consider it, but it is portable. I I consider it more of a portable console than a home console. Actually, I used to say the opposite. Like I said, the Switch isn't fucking portable. Well, I was wrong. I gotta eat those words. That motherfucker is portable as shit. I played it on a train. I played it on the roof of my house. Played it in the bathroom. I played it in the played bathroom. On a bus. I played it on a bus. Played it in the car. Um, I play it more undocked than I play it docked. I would think if I had a switch, I would play it more undocked. I'd like to have it in my lap while I'm watching something on TV. That's the best, man. Watching something on TV yeah. you don't really care about, or just yeah. background noise, maybe reruns of Family Guy or Bob's Burgers. Yeah, exactly. I Meanwhile, like you're you're getting moons or or racing. Race Racing Luigi. Yeah, just doing it. Give that, 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 that cold Death Star. <laughs> ah. All right. And help me with the pronunciation. Nobuo oh. Umatsu. You got it. Okay. You got it. The famous composer from the Final Fantasy series is actually going to take, is going to bow out of the series due to health reasons. Uh, yeah. He, unfortunately, he has to bow out of composing. He, he has some kind of uh, health issues that he has not disclosed. But they say it's compromising his work, and he doesn't want to compromise, so well, he's uh, taking a sabbatical. I want to see, like, I mean, is he, uh, oh yeah, he's definitely an older guy. He's he's 59. Well, he looks a lot older than he he is. Well, wow. Okay. You know, those 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 Japanese, man, they work themselves to death. They do. They get like three hours of sleep. Like uh, Ichiro uh-huh. Oda, the, the the drawer and creator of One Piece, he, work, he sleeps exactly. like three hours a night and smokes 18 packs of cigarettes in two exactly. days. Exactly. You know, it, it sucks to hear this because he's my favorite composer of all time. He has made my favorite soundtracks. He did the soundtrack to like Final Fantasies 1 through, I want to say, 12. Uh, he did my favorite soundtrack of all time, which was for Final Fantasy 6. Uh, he helped do the Chrono Trigger soundtrack. Um, I want to say he worked on the Nier soundtrack, possibly. Uh, don't quote me on that. But man, just his stuff is just fucking amazing. Well, and it, it's, while we're here, let's talk about him. Let's see. Here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Here. I'm trying to see if I can get his. He's been with Square since 1985. Yes. Genesis, Alpha, Final Fantasy. Um, he did the Saga series. Oh, yeah. Final Fantasy Legends. We got Chrono Trigger. Um, Front Mission Gun Hazard. Um, the Hanjuko Hero series. Oh my goodness, the movie Final Fantasy Unlimited. He has a well documented pass. Oh yes, done a lot of stuff. Very cool. Well, it's sad to hear that his health is declining. So hopefully somebody can step in and uh, wear his shoes and, and oh. do just as well. That's what you got to hope. Compo- he composed the main theme for Smash Bros. Brawl. Oh wow. Yeah. You know how many times I left that game on. And just hearing that theme. 17. No, way more than that. Oh, 1,700. Probably. Probably probably a good roundabout number. Um, So, while we're on the topic of um, rumors, and I know that's not for uh, Nobuo or Nuboo, new whatever, whatever, um, the PS Plus lineup might have a rumored drop, okay? <clears throat> so what I read is there's a user on Reddit who has some kind of in or has done this before and uh, basically leaked and was right about what the PlayStation Plus games were. And this time he's saying that it's going to be Neo and Diablo 3, the Eternal Collection. Man, if that's true... That is Sony bringing the hammer down two months in a row. You know, yes, they they obviously this month Destiny two and God of War three remastered. Mm-hmm. If they bring the heat with Neo and Diablo three, man, aren't you pissed now that you bought Diablo three? I am. 
<laughs> I am so pissed. I bought it for the third time now. Oh, you just waited like another month. <sighs> Terrible. Oh. Mm. Oh. But like I, I, I like this pattern Sony's doing. They're giving us two AAA games. And if you notice that one is single player and one's multiplayer. Yeah, it's amazing. Both times. It's that's an awesome idea. Um, and you played Neo. You said it's really good. It is. It's very much a Souls game. You know, okay. it's a Bloodborne. It's a Dark Souls. Uh, except it's set in Japan. You're fighting a bunch of Japanese demons. It's based on a real life uh, American samurai, uh, not Tom Cruise. Uh, or, no, he wasn't American. I think he was Scottish or Irish, but he was a white guy. But uh, I think his name was William. He was a pirate, and he like crash landed in Japan or crashed in Japan, and he kind of grew up there and became a, a samurai. And now, of course, you're fighting demons and shit. It's really cool. It's got like a nice intricate little battle system where you obviously you can equip different weapons like swords and uh, spears and axes and so forth. But it's also got uh, you can do like high stance, low stance, mid stance and it affects your attack patterns like high stance. You swing slower, but do more damage. Low stance. You do uh, faster attacks with less attack power and mid stances, you know, middle attacks. Uh, I like to go do swords myself like uh, like I'm fucking Roa Noah Zoro and just go in there and just start slash slash slashing. <laughs> Ruin or zero slash 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 two arm gorilla slash <laughs> very cool yeah i'm excited i mean i'm gonna give it a try if it's free obviously uh, oh yeah it was a big uh uh an awesome let's not say big but it was a very awesome addition to the the playstation exclusive library oh um, it was it was one of their biggest hits last was year. it okay i, I, I didn't know how yeah. big it hit so i didn't want to speak to that no it, it came out with a bunch of fantastic reviews like nines a lot of nines, a lot of nines. Uh, I don't know if it was a huge seller, but it was it was definitely a feather in their cap. It it came out alongside I think like Horizon Zero Dawn, Near Automata, Yakuza Zero. It came out early in the year. Man, I forgot how good of a year last year was. God damn, Sony killed it. They're killing it constantly. Yeah, two years in a row. What's gonna happen they, next year? Sony's gonna get arrested for fucking war crimes with all this genocide they're doing. Nintendo did, Nintendo killed it too last year though. They they just they were right there neck and neck as well. So, uh, well, what did they release last year? They had Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Zel- and Mario, Mario Rabbids, Mario Kart. But that was yeah, they did re-release. Mario Kart. Not as nearly as much, I don't think. They did good, but I think honestly, people are supposed to remember it because of Mario and Zelda. Sure. Yeah, the big, the big one-two punches. Yeah, they had the, they had the, they had the Batman and Superman of last year, the two versus uh, Sony's Marvel lineup of still very awesome, but not as well known. Yes, titles. Very true. Speaking of Superman, shout out to Henry Cavill, no longer Superman. What's the word uh, coming to? God, I will miss him. Best Superman so we've good. had since Christopher Reeve. Best, li- best Superman. Only, only live action Superman I've liked. Really. Yeah, I I didn't. I'm not. I don't like the old Christopher Reeve movies. They're too cheesy, and I don't speak of Brian Roth. Oof, that was a terrible movie. Mm-mm. That was a terrible Superman movie. Returns. Terrible, Ugh. terrible movie. Terrible. Uh, Dean Kane is a fantastic Superman. He was good. I like Dean Kane. So we can't write him off ever. Um, let's talk about some PlayStation stuff again. The PlayStation Now service, which was PlayStation's. Uh, video game streaming service. You signed up for a subscription. You could stream games. Um, a lot of their PS3, PS2, and and I guess PS4 titles. But they did a big update. I guess they're trying to compete with the Games Pass, the Xbox Games Pass. You can now download PS2 and PS4 games with the PS Now subscription straight to your console to play for as long as you have the subscription, and uh, which is fantastic. Big move forwards. Because the streaming your games, I mean, if you got a bandwidth cap, if you don't have good internet, that's shitty. It doesn't work. Um, you can't do PlayStation 3 games. Apparently, they're not compatible. But PS2 and PS4 are on the table. Jeremy, what do you think about it? This is a fantastic move. It's what, it's what PS Now should have been to begin with. Streaming games is just stupid. Um, you sh- There was no reason you shouldn't have been able just to download them. And obviously... You can play them as long as your subscription is valid. It, it, would, it would be just like PS Plus. You know how if your subscription lapses, you can't your games are lots? Why not have this for PS Now? Um, so this is definitely, definitely right. And if they keep adding more games, that's fantastic. I don't know why they can't get PS3 to work with PS4, though. I just do not understand this. 
I don't want to bang my head on the wall and try to figure it out. <clears throat> I mean, that sucks because there's a lot of great games on PS3. You know? Yeah, I, I mean, agree. It's, it's, I mean, I, I guess it's worth it. I mean, how much are they charging? I don't know what the price is up to now. I think it was a little bit more pricey than Games Pass. Um, let's see what the... Let's see what we but got they, here. They need to stay competitive with Game Pass. Yeah, because Game Pass was one of the biggest moves that Microsoft's made, I think, this whole year. Yeah. Um, let's see here. For PlayStation Now, it looks like... Why don't you tell me how much you are? They want to hide it. That's what they want to do, Jeremy. Um, night. Hold on. Twenty dollars a month. Twenty dollars a month. How much is Xbox Games Pass? Ten ninety or nine ninety nine. Oh, that's so twice as double. Much. Yeah, but I'm Ooh, thinking that's... that they're going to. They have to restructure that. If you're going to charge twice as much, I think. I can't hear you, Jeremy. I think I lost you. And Jeremy's back. What's happening, buddy? Oh, I don't know what the fuck happened there. A little bit of technical difficulty. Everything went screwy. But with the magic of editing, the world will never know. I guess a light breeze gusted up against my internet connection. That's probably what happened, honestly. Um, we got one last topic to mention, and we can briefly go over it, because I know it's one of our favorite games here at Hell Average Gaming. We can't wait to play it right now. Mahjong! Oh. <laughs> Every time. Every time. PUBG! I gotta do a here. It's coming. To the PlayStation. It's a rumor. But the rumor is that it's coming. My question is, do you think anyone's going to play it? Yeah, I think it's a fantastic move for them. I think it opens up a shit ton, I I don't know, X million more fans to play it. I mean, mean, is there anyone still playing it? Yeah, it's still got, I mean, everything is Fortnite, but there are still, I would say it's got its base still. It's not going anywhere yet. Hmm. It's I mean, on the I decline, but it's still a presence. It's still like I, the third or fourth top stream game on Twitch. I mean, I don't keep up with PUBG at all, but all the stuff I've been seeing like in on news sites is like it's just almost dead. Yeah. Let me see where it sits at on Twitch right now. But yeah, usually any any given time you go on Twitch and it's up there, like top one, two, huh. three, something like that. Sometimes it's Fortnite and then PUBG. Cause I was under the assumption this might be just too little too late. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say that. Let's see here. Where's the games at? My Twitch is running slow, so I can't tell you right now. But yeah, when you get on there, it's usually going to be right up there with the top games being uh, streamed. So it's still got a presence. It just, it, it's weird though, because it just, every time I hear this, it's just like, it's, it's like hearing about vanilla ice. If that makes any sense. It's just like, wow, he's still relevant. Absolutely. Uh-huh. He's still relevant. But, alas, that's it for the news. Jeremy, do we miss anything? I think that's all. That's everything. We don't have a super fight. Please don't be mad at us. If you want, me and Cam can fight it right now. Uh, Cam, you get baby arms. I get baby legs. Oh, God. That would be a great uh, fight. We're, we're armed with fun noodles. <laughs> and we have beer goggles on. Beer goggles, yes. There we go. And we're fighting in a... Foam, uh, no, no, uh, a a ball pit, like a like a ooh, restaurant like ball that. pit, like one of those like McDonald's ball pits. I like that. Yes, yes, nice. Um, so find out who wins next time. Jeremy, get us out of here. Uh, what was I supposed to say again? Anything you fucking want. I don't care. Oh, okay. Uh, suck a dick <laughs> and stay hella average. <laughs> Peace. Oh. Uh.